my name is George Aguilar. I'm the training manager here at Clayval headquarters in Costa Mesa, California. In today's video, we're going to be discussing and providing you with a live demonstration on the operation of our 90 series pressure reducing valves. Let's get started. So in this video, we're going to describe the basic operation of our 90 series. So the valve that we have currently installed right here, this is our 90-01. The design and the functionality of this valve is that it is designed to maintain constant downstream pressure regardless of fluctuations in upstream pressure and also regardless of fluctuations in flow. So on our VC22 here, uh, once we get this going, you're going to see that flow rate increase. As your flow rate increases, that's going to cause a drop in your downstream pressure. This valve is a modulating valve it will modulate open to get back to that maximum uh, downstream pressure set point. And again, as our flow rate starts to drop off, meaning there's no demand in the system, our pressure is going to rise. This valve will modulate close again to maintain that maximum downstream pressure. We'll also see our upstream pressure vary. All right. We'll see our upstream pressure fluctuate a little bit. Um, again, this valve is only looking at and maintaining downstream pressure to a maximum preset point. So let's talk about some of the components that are on this valve here. As we go through the pilot system, first you'll notice we have some ball valves here. We have a ball valve on the inlet. I call this our number one ball valve. We have a ball valve on the cover on the backside here. I call this number two. And we have a ball valve here on the outlet, which is what I call number three. These ball valves are our B option. Next in line here, we have our Y strainer. Every one of our valves is gonna have one form or the other of a, uh, of a strainer. This is our Y strainer or our Y option. All right, it looks like this here. We also have an A option, which is an inline strainer. This inline strainer Again, it may just look like a bushing. If you do not have one of these Y strainers, you're going to have this bushing coming right here off your inlet body port. Um, again, both optional features. The inline strainer, this is going to be standard on valves three inch and smaller. Uh, on valves four inch and larger, the standard uh, install will be our Y strainer. You can see we even have a blow off option on this Y strainer as well. Following our tubing, you come to our restriction fitting. Our restriction fitting here is what allows this valve to work. This is what we call our X58C. You see it has a red die on there. We have other options that have a blue die. Okay, this red die is standard on valves four inch and larger. The blue die is standard on valves three inch and smaller. For references on the sizing of those restriction fittings, you'll have to refer to um, our IOM. Um, on the sizing of those restriction fittings. But always remember that this restriction fitting is sitting there. This restriction fitting is what allows this valve to work. So as our CRD opens, water is coming off the cover of the valve. This restriction fitting is just that. It is restricting the flow of water going onto the cover. All right, it's about an eighth inch orifice on this restriction fitting here. All of our tubing is all three eighths. The seat size on the CRD is only a, a quarter inch. So without this restriction fitting, with all this 3 8 tubing, the CRD would be taking water off, but what would happen is we'd be putting more water on than the CRD can take off. So we would essentially be flooding the cover. So we install this restriction fitting here, we restrict the water on the cover so the CRD can take water off faster than you're able to put it on. And we'll get into that in some of our troubleshooting videos as well. Uh, next up here, we have our speed controls. Our speed controls have suffix letters of C as in closing and S as in opening. The way that these speed controls work is that we are restricting flow from this side connection here. As water is going this way, we restrict it. Water coming from the bottom, bottom up, that is free flow. So this one here is restricting water coming this way. Water off the cover opens the valve. This one here would be our opening speed control. This one here would be our closing speed control. You can see they're the same exact part. 
All right, it's just a matter of how you have them installed on your valve. So this closing speed control would be installed over here on the back side, and we would be restricting flow going onto the cover, and there would, that would be your closing speed control. Now our CRD, our CRD control RD for reduce, that is our reducing pilot. This is a normally open pilot. It's normally open because of this spring tension here. So the further that you go clockwise, you're increasing this spring tension. You increase this spring tension, which opens up the CRD. If the CRD is open, water is allowed off the cover, this valve is going to open up. It's sensing, uh, sensing outlet pressure. So on a rise in outlet pressure, on a rise in outlet pressure, it's going to push above that spring setting, pushes this yoke assembly up, this pilot closes, and now water has no pathway off the cover. It backs up onto the cover and it closes the valve. So it's a, it's a normally open pilot. Again, it's sensing outlet pressure. And on a rise in outlet pressure, this pilot is going to close. On a drop in outlet pressure, this pilot's going to open up. This is, this is our regulating pilot. All right, this pilot, again, is, this is what is making, uh, allowing this valve to open or close. So again, it's designed to maintain downstream uh, pressure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get some pressure here within our system and let's see how this valve works. So we got an increase of pressure here. You can see our inlet pressure starting to rise a little bit. So there we go, we get our inlet pressure. It's currently at 60 PSI, and you can see the setting of our CRD is at 40. All right, if you wanna make changes to your CRD, we would move that black cap. You will review our IOM. On the back side of our IOM, we have a spring chart that would show you the adjustment ranges. So on this one here, on this valve that we currently have is a 30 to 300, which tells me I have a 27 PSI per turn rate on that adjustment screw. So as we make that adjustment, you can see that outlet pressure start to rise just above 50 there. I go clockwise on this adjustment screw. And you can see our outlet pressure starting to drop. Now again, this is only maintaining downstream pressure. We'll bring that back up to 40. Now what we'll do is we'll start to adjust our demand downstream. So we're going to increase our flow rate. You can see we've increased 170. Now we're up to about 200. 220. Again, our downstream pressure has remained the same at 40. We increase it a little bit more. Our flow rate has gone up to 230, 240. To 80. And even down up to 350, 400. And again, the valve modulates, it makes its change and it goes to 40. Now as our flow rate decreases, again, maintaining that downstream 40 PSI regardless of changes in flow rate downstream. Now if we look at our inlet pressure, you can even see pressure starts to rise, 70, even all the way up to 80 PSI but no changes in our pressure downstream. Again, the design of this valve is to maintain downstream pressure regardless of changes or fluctuations in upstream pressure and regardless in changes in flow. That concludes the video today. Thanks for stopping by and watching. For further videos or any other questions, please visit our website. Have a great day.